Hello and welcome to Dream It, Dare It, Do It, Live the Life You Want. I am Jasmine, your host. If um, you don't know yet, snow is melting here in Quebec. Well, it was all gone, actually. And then yesterday came all back. Well, not all, thank God, but it came back. And I have to admit, I can't no more. I just don't want to. <laughs> That being said, it's just a thought. It'll pass. And, you know, next week it's going to be beautiful sun. So today I have a friend of mine, Karina Lois. Hi, Karina. Hi. Hi. Good to be here. How are you? I'm really well, thank you. Really well. So, guys, Karina and I have been in I don't know how many classes together. (laughs) You know, we just, we've never met. We only meet via Zoom. So, here we are again. <laughs> and um, but before we we go on to our chat, because I know that we're going to probably just chat it away. How about you just let my listeners know who you are and where you're at? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yep, Karina Loeth. I'm based in England, in, in near Oxford. Um, and it's not where I grew up. I grew up um, in Switzerland, in Geneva. So... I uh, was there till I was 18 um, and then came over here um, to the UK and studied law um, and mm. became a mum and stopped the law and uh, stopped practicing as an intellectual property sister and then was a stay at home mum. So I'm just giving you like the the background, you know, the, the background picture. Um, and then I was like, so I was, I was a stay at home mum and then always knew that I wanted to go back to work, but just wasn't sure what, because I knew I didn't want to go back to law. I hated the, the restriction of, of having to account for six minutes of my time. And it just, although I love the strategy of being a litigator, you know, conflict resolution, I, I it, my heart wasn't in it. So, but then it was a big question of what do I do um but you know life threw certain things at me along the way including um divorce um and so I was you know forced to to find work quickly and eventually it's led to where I'm at now which is is coaching but also some legal work um part-time which I kind of like because I love being part of a team um and it's a different it's working for a really cool company in renewable energy and doing cool stuff in the world including peatland restoration which is is kind of new and upcoming um and fits in quite nicely with i feel what i do in the coaching which is is almost like a rewilding of of, of to back to our inner nature of who we really are sort of like so what is it that you call it pit pit what peatland restoration so it's 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 like a, a huge source of, of carbon. It, it's basically amazing to be able to restore them because they they absorb a lot of carbon. But when they're when they're not um, when they're degraded, they actually emit huge amounts. So it's like really critical that those are restored in order to to bring them back to to basically restore them back to how how they should be. Um, mm. And that's kind of like what I do with clients too in terms of um you know a lot of us are walking around with mistaken identities to who we are we believe we are what we think we are um and these identities that we we build um around ourselves and actually helping us to look inside again and to come back to to you know like that that sense of of being that that we have since when we were little right through to now you know like i still think i'm 21 years old that's a random age but that, that you know that ageless sensation of of who we are that that is what i think is is our true nature when we feel like yeah um the way that like when we say oh i'm not myself today well that points to there's sometimes when we really feel ourselves is that deeper feeling and of, of who we are um, yes yeah. i think i'm 28 i think yeah, the number yeah. is 28 for me <laughs> it's so random isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. 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 It, it's so funny but it kind of changes also sometimes i'm 35 it's just like what what is that like you know like it's just like oh but it's true how i could sit here and go 53 where when did that happen you know you're like wait what yeah it's just crazy how it just passes quickly so let me let me ask you how did you so obviously you're a three principles coach um you know my listeners know that i talk about my thought consciousness 
or mind consciousness and thought. I've been working with the three PGC and I've been realizing that I've been saying it for years, mind, thought, consciousness. It's mind, consciousness and thought. I did not know that. Did you know that? Um, yeah, but I'm not too convinced that it really matters to be. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I don't think so either. But how did you get into this conversation? Because I, I accessed it through Michael Neal. I don't know if you were the same. Well, no, well, kind of. An, no, it was through Dr. Aaron Turner. And it was completely random. Like I wasn't looking for it. I actually was at an independent hotel show because one of the, the jobs that I took around my son's um, school time was to work in an independent um, hotel um, where I live. And I was doing an HR role. And um, so I went to this conference and this, yeah, and um, show rather. And I went to all the HR talks and one of them was build the alternative um, HR talk. And of course, I always love things that are a little bit different. So I was like, I'm definitely going to that one. And it was Dr. Aaron Turner talking about state of mind. And, and his angle on that was, you know, how to get employees really engaged beyond just like rewards and remuneration, like what makes people tick and, and how to get the best out of people, or rather, you know, how they can flourish and shine and, and the impact that has on business. And I was really curious and I thought, wow, there was something there. But I went and spoke to him afterwards and, and thought, oh, it'd be great to get the training. And then it wasn't going to be feasible. So I kind of parked it for a bit. But he'd mentioned this book that his uncle had written called The Relationship Handbook, which is George Pransky. And um, because I'd had the divorce and I'd always been really curious as to, you know, how relate my relationship broke down and, and what I could do to avoid that ever happening and to learn from it, I, I thought, mm, I kind of like earmarked that book. And a couple of months later, with with an Amazon credit, bought, bought it. Um, and around the same time, again, without realizing on Audible, got a buy one, get one free kind of offer. And that included Michael Neal's Inside Out Revolution. So it was a combination of those two things that really just like blew me away. But I was walking my dog um, through this and I remember the exact spot where something Michael Neal said just really just arrested me. And I was like, wow, of course, like it was truth, just pure truth, just flooded my body. And it was that, you know, we are not, I can't remember the exact words of, of how he said it, but basically that we're not broken. There's nothing wrong with us. All there is is a whole load of thought that's in the way that we've believed to be true. Um, and actually beyond that, we're perfectly healthy. And that so made sense to me. Like, why would we be designed faulty from the start? So it made sense that there would be, um, you know, inner beauty. Well, that's how I see it. inner beauty that would then just get covered up by limited beliefs um, and experiences that didn't turn out how we thought they should and that we made personal about us and our, you know, our, our worth. Um, and that's how a lot of us end up, you know, living, living life not as expensively as we could um and with not a lot of self-compassion so that's what um really struck me and i also realized that i'd always seen um the beauty in other people like the gifts the possibility the potential just naturally in talking to people not i couldn't do it for myself but i could easily do it for other people and it made me realize listening to that yeah i've always seen their true nature like that's that's what was going on there um and so of course because it was such a big deal to me i was like i want to do this this is what i've always wanted to do i wanted to coach because i love listening i love yeah i love having, being in conversation and pointing people to how amazing they are um mm. and not really being that bought into their limiting beliefs because i know that although they feel really real they lack substance they're just an illusion in that with fresh seeing with fresh perspective they kind of like dissipate without anything you know needing really to be done i mean some take longer because it's not like you know always that straightforward but it's incredible the transformation that's possible with an insight so it's so funny because as you're talking i'm hearing because we both went to coaching right we went we went to towards how can we learn this so that we can teach people or you know coach them and show them but the three principles is is not for coaches it just so happens that there's a lot of them out there right now especially in, like i mean a lot of people listening who don't know the three principles yeah. are going there's a lot of them where <laughs> you know but 
the forget the coaching <laughs> forget that we we're going to we coach you to do to to see this the three principles are there to show you how you work exactly they're descriptive it's the way we all function that's why it's applicable to absolutely every single person yeah how did you like how did did it work on you cuz the the thing that i'm seeing where we meet is when you when you told me your your website by the way her website is insideoutlove.com um so when you you said that i could see i could already feel that you saw the love like when i first started in this conversation like the words that would keep coming out of my mouth would be get out of your head get into your heart get out of exactly, your head exactly well, that's exactly heart. what i was just gonna say that's exactly what my website is all about you know yeah because i because i think you know before you were saying you're, you, you you have always been quite intellectual and me too you know especially with my legal training oh let's analyze the life out of everything you know like yeah. analysis paralysis and figuring it out wanting needing to understand needing to know that was very much the way my mind worked and sometimes it's great especially if there's like a you know facts there that you have to play with and and, and you want to foresee what's going on in the future so it can be helpful but to 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 lead your whole life that way like everyday living my goodness me it's 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 just not living life fully alive and engaged because you know when we live on our heads especially we have limiting beliefs about ourselves like our self concept is 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 not healthy we're not we're not living life to the full we're not seeing our, we're not seeing full possibility we're we're busy there's no space for fresh and new we're just going on repeat on the old you know old records playing round and round so for me that was another big change was to realize actually my intellect was was of limited value that the, the the more busy i got the more that was a sign that i should slow down like you know when you shake up the globe you, you just can't see clearly and just hey put it down a minute and things get so much more clear and i you know like times i've had excessively busy mind where for example when i was in the middle of divorce and and divorce negotiation and financial settlement i was so in my head you know there was worry fear all of that and I was so not present in my life. I was so in my head, you know, I'd leave the keys in the door or, you know, something yeah. ridiculous that normally I'd never, ever do and never have done since. But when we are, that's just an extreme example of living like in our heads, but other examples I'm sure we've all had is when you're driving and you're in your head thinking about things, ruminating and you miss the turning because you, you just weren't focused and in the now. Um, so I really value remembering that there is a much deeper place that I can come from, which I, which the symbol for me is the heart. Um, but it's really the, the our, our inner nature, our, our deeper nature, our essence, um, so, which is the land of intuition, I think. So basically you're like, I mean, what we're pointing to is presence also right yeah, yeah so what would you like if you had to put words to presence or put a definition to presence what would you what would you use hmm. what would be your take on that in terms of the feeling yeah in terms yeah. of anything whatever shows up for you yeah so so stillness um peace hmm. but love as well because as soon as 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 the mind stops we we end up <laughs> I, don't, I like to say we end up in our hearts we are love and so we, we we sense that deep those deeper feelings and i'm not talking romantic love i'm talking yeah. a feeling of 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 inspiration of beauty i mean we're we're just awake aren't we i think maybe awake is is perhaps yeah isn't? yeah it's, yeah it's, it's, it's colorful more colorful yeah i so I, I I don't know if I told you this, but I I'm now working with the three P French community, yeah. right? So uh, with the three P, obviously, like all of this content, all of the words that we've used, which is, you know, words we're we're using words to point to a feeling, guys. Just so you know, so that's why there's a lot of conversation around it because it's like trying to, you know put something into form that it's not a form. It's literally how you feel inside. 
and with the 3P French community, what we were talking about was just that. I was telling them because when we do our webinars, you know, we, we, we meet and we all know, because we're all from the community, that we're in this beautiful space of love. But I think that people, people like f get kind of like distracted with the word love, you know? So that's why I'm kind of like, I'm just exploring. And, and the word presence is also another word that that's why I was asking you because, you know, being in the here and now people kind of go, yeah, 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 you want me to <laughs> I know I have to be here. Don't go into your head. But it's yeah. kind of like there's a there's a difference. There's a there's like the yeah yeah is you're in your head. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like as soon as you're saying yeah yeah, you missed it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, to me, love, um, another way that is often spoken about in the community is, is like coming home to who you are. Like it's that feeling of, of home. And, and, and maybe another way of, 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 of pointing that is, you know, the situations you can, you can have a sense of felt sense of that in situations where you feel totally comfortable in your own skin. Like, I don't know, it could be for, for different people, it'll be different things. Um, yeah. for me, the obvious ones are like skiing or because I have that sense of freedom, that expansiveness, that everything's possible. Like I feel the potential as I'm skiing down the slopes, you know, the, uh, when nature just, I'm just there. And, and it's a feeling of, of not being se as separate from nature is that kind of feeling connected, you know, um, or music does it too. And especially live music when I'm at a music festival and like in the middle of the crowd, I lose a sense of, 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 of little me and I'm, and I'm just in, in that feeling that to me, I would describe as love, you know, it's, 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 it's potent. It's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's not in my, it, I'm, I'm out of, I literally out of my mind cause I'm not thinking about it. I'm, I'm just in it. Um, yeah. and it has that, you know, provide that you've had a, a, a good up, you know, a, a non um, harmful upbringing. It's that that safe, that feeling of safety that we associate with with what we call home or think of as home generally, unless there's been abuse. But um, it's so funny because that feeling of it's like going home. I've never associated to it. I'm never like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm always home. What what the heck? I haven't, you know, I haven't kind of associated with it. Maybe I should read Dickens' book. You know, going home. Maybe that I I. But I'm not a reader. Sorry, Dickon. Sorry. Uh, well, what you just said is true too. Like we're always home. That's also true. But when we're in our head, we don't feel what I'm pointing to is yeah. So yeah, uh, I think for me the the thing that's so so as I was telling you, I I really could see how here's how I started associating it. Mm -hmm. So for me, it it's with animals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I. I instantly love animals, mm -hmm. like any animal. I, I'm, I'm on even bugs, although there's this little fly that's bugging me right now. But even even like insects, like, you know, I'm going to be like, okay, no, no, you got to go outside. You can't live here. No, I can't. I can't do it. And then I take them and I put them outside. And then my intellect would be like, you know, telling me, Bella, come on, get over it, just squish it. And I'd be like, and, and I could feel it in my heart, you know, like somebody tells me I'm going to squish, like, especially spiders, you know, people are like, kill the spider. And I'm like, don't you dare kill the spider. Like, it's literally like, you can't do that. Right. So I started seeing that. I started seeing that with the dog. And then my intellect would fight with me. It was like, man, come on, you got, you can't do that. Like I would, uh, constantly, I would be in this noise <laughs> of yeah. stuff, you know, until I saw, wait, that's actually inside this conversation, started learning and started, no, that's actually the, the essence of who we are. I mean, who, who, like the world, I mean, the, the ant was put here for a reason. The spider was put here for a reason. The spider does what the spider does. Jasmine does what Jasmine does, right? So it, it kind of like started t 
turning the wheel for me, started making me look in that direction. But I would still fight with my intellect. Mm -hmm. And that when I was able to say, oh, wait, that's just my intellect. It's not my heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really helpful, isn't it? Mm. It it was just like, because the intellect used to win. Like, you know, the intellect is also full of judgment. And I had all of these past stories, you know, opinions, thought, ideas of something should be, and I had a lot of shoulds. And now I can just go, oh, yeah, no, that's, that's not me. Yeah. But before you came across this understanding, I mean, maybe there were other teachings that you come across that yeah. helped to see that. But yes. before I came across the three principles, I didn't know that distinction that I could, there was, there it's almost like two radio stations that I could tune into. Yeah. I thought that was who I was when I was listening. It's like, you know, on my website, I have a heading mistaken identity. That's, that's, you know, whereas knowing that there is another place that we can tune into and that actually that has more juice to it. It's like, you know, it's our inner GPS. And that to me, we're not going to get lost following that. It may not be clear and our intellect may fight it exactly how you described. Like, no, 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 not that. Surely not. And, you know, that doubting, doubting Thomas kind of voice. But but sometimes we just have to let that run, but just not turn it up full volume and let it just be background noise and actually just, you know, keep going with what, what is our truth, what, what we feel drawn towards and, and kind of on some deeper level know is is right like in your case you know no i'm not going to 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 crush that that insect um yeah. it's it's that doesn't well, resonate i i i remember when when like the one of the major insights or that that really triggered that that created a shift like that shifted it for me that made me go wait it like totally shifted from one side to another i was i wanted to be a coach. I was like getting, I was getting coaching on becoming a coach, right? So I'm not the type, I, I tend to talk. I like, I, I, I used to not say anything, but then I went into this, this leadership class and they showed us how to speak, how to speak up and how to say, and I started to see how, oh man, when I actually speak, speak it out loud, I can actually hear how freaking ridiculous it is, first of all, (laughs) you know, if I keep it inside, then it's not that ridiculous. It's real. Then when I take it out of myself, I kind of go, really? Um, So I, I really early learned to let me go talk to somebody and see what they say, you know, and so it was talking with this person and I was telling this person you know, we were having this beautiful conversation and she was like, you would be a good coach. And I'm like, no, I really wouldn't be. And she'd be like, but why do you say that? I was like, well, I'm nice now. Right now I'm nice, but really, really, I'm, I'm actually a bitch, you know? And she'd be like, what? Like just didn't make any sense. And I've said this story. I'm sorry to those of you who've learned, who've heard it before, but Like, I really, truly believed that I was a bitch. I really did. I thought I'm I'm the meanest, I'm the rudest, you know, and then I have to pretend to be nice and that's tiring. Um, And the girl said to me, she says, well, what if it's the reverse? What if the girl that you're pretending to be is the bitch? And I... Like that blew my mind Mm -hmm. and I started laughing my brains out, like laughing hysterically, holding my stomach, couldn't speak for like at least five minutes. And she was like, what the hell did I say? And I'm like, I'm, I think back then I was like 40 or something like that. I said for 40 years, I've been wanting to hide the bad part. And all I've been doing is showing it. Like I wanted to show the true me and I've been not doing that. Right. And it was just so funny. I laugh and laughed and laughed. And I, and I now know that when I'm rude, when I'm bitchy, when I'm 
snappish. Mm -hmm. I'm in my head. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the person in front of me. I, I could think it is. Has nothing to do with them. But isn't that amazing? Just that shift in perspective, seeing yes. that your default was you know, not the bitch. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and just more generally that it's not that we're broken or need fixing, but actually that we're healthy. Like, wow, so good to know, right? Because, yeah. and then state of mind really starts to make sense. Oh yeah. You know, when I'm not in a good state of mind, I perhaps aren't, I'm not the funniest or kindest person to be around, but that's not, it's not who I really am. It's a temporary state of mind. And just noticing that then quite often is enough to pop us out. Cause you know, it was, it was a real illusion. Yeah. It was true. It felt true to you to think that you were a bitch, right? That, that felt really true. You weren't pretending, right? Yeah. And that's the same with various different flavors, you know, not good enough or whatever flavors that we take on. But actually when we know that that's not who we really are, then that adds, some, that, that adds, there's spaciousness that comes around it. We start to be able to question it and we can, can see, oh no, oh, it's only sometimes that I behave, behave that way. It's not always, oh, well, that's interesting. And then there's more and more clues that unravel and we start to trust um, more and more that no, who we are is actually, you know, love, back to love again, you know? Yeah. It's actually, it, 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 we, we, we are neutral. There's, there's a neutrality to us. Like I keep coming back to this and as an example, because it's the best example that I can find. And it just hits the spot every time. But when my mom passed away, I mean, I had seen her suffer so much, you know, I, I was just like, I was neutral. Yes. I was sad. Of course I didn't want her to go, but I was okay. Yeah. I was okay with it. It was kind of like I was telling her, mom, it's okay. Yeah. You don't have to hold on. You can, you can go, you, you've done what you needed to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was amazed that I was able to do that. Like, I, I mean, cause I was taking care of her. I was her, her caregiver and she had dementia and I thought, you know, I would never be able to do that. But when you just stay in your heart and not get stuck on this shouldn't be happening. Exactly. Exactly. Just being with exactly how it is not. And that points to another thing, which is why I wanted the inside out um, to feature on my website name is that our experience is being created from the inside out. And if we can be with what is that, and that enables us to be with what is because if, if we see everything as neutral without the labels, which is all head base of that's wrong, that's right. It should be like this. It shouldn't be. If we can just be with what is, it allows us to have that fluid experience. Um, and we have a choice to a certain extent. Um, and it also helps us to see again, that we don't need anything to be a certain way on the outside because we, yeah, it's, that's not what actually brings us the joy, the, the pleasure really. It's, it's all from within certain things may seem conducive. And I think what it is to me is like, Oh, why is it? I feel so peaceful by water. Well, I just really love water. I just happen to really love it. And I don't need to know why, but it so happens that, you know, it, it, I, I notice that quite often my mind goes quiet around water, maybe because the beauty arrests me. Um, and I just fall into the moment and it looks like it's the water doing that, but not really. It's just because I happen to love it so much, which again is why inside out love, I like, I like the play. It's because, you know, what do I love? What brings me joy? Let's do more of that. What, 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 what would I love to create in my life? Um, and, and that again, I think brings us deeper inside as to, to the truth of who we are when we're doing things for the pure joy, because it makes our hearts sing not because we should or because it will get us recognition and approval you know that's outside in um yeah that just adds pressure i also love that i remember where i was like you know there was a time where i wanted to be a singer you know i wanted to be a popular singer 
<laughs> Thanks. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be this popular singer because then people are going to love me, you know, and then I'm going to be, I'm going to be happy. And then I'm going to like, there was this, I know that there was like a whole bunch of weight that came with that. And every time I was not a popular singer, then the opposite was like, cause right. Cause if there's like this whole big thing about it, well, if this doesn't come, then it, inevitably turns into the bad thing yeah right? it's like when we're caught up in in the in created content so if we're we're caught up in this is going to be good well if you're caught up in that and you can't separate yourself from it inevitably you can switch to it's bad yeah. very quickly yeah that's, that's why we keep going like this you know yeah. be, so if we can just see that it's happening, oh, I, like, I remember also seeing my preferences. Oh, I would prefer, you know, to be blonder. Okay, we'll get more streaks or, you know, yeah, but I can't get more streaks. I want natural hair. Okay, <laughs> you would prefer that, but your hair naturally is not that. So what are you going to? be upset because <laughs> your hair is not naturally blonde yeah this yeah. makes no sense but but i could have been caught up in those kind of things before yeah yeah because it, it, it you gave it extra meaning beyond just a oh i'd like to have this and like you know ice cream you have to have vanilla it's just that maybe you prefer vanilla i have to love coffee ice cream so that would be what my preference but I'm not going to suddenly be depressed if I don't have, I mean, that's a crap yeah. example, but you know what I'm getting yeah. at. No, no, I know what you're getting at at all. I, I totally, I mean, and it's also like, if you prefer vanilla, pref like, but you know what you want, you, you want vanilla, get vanilla. You want coffee, get coffee. I actually think I'd have coffee with you. Uh <laughs> and you know, just back on what you were saying, like last year, I really saw how I was still caught in, in, a, in the illusion of, of my my sense of self worth being caught up in what I was doing. So as a child, I was top of the class in school, like through throughout secondary school. You know, I was the best. It came easy. It was just great. And then I went on to do law at university, um, and suddenly I wasn't the best anymore. And so it's good whilst the going's good. You know, you you get that sense of yeah, achievement. You know, you feel good. But then as soon as anything goes wrong, whew, you know, because if you're depending on something outside of yourself to feel good, it's 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 not great. So, you know, some super achievers, they may get a kick out of doing well, but there will come a, a point where the rug's going to be pulled, no doubt. You know, maybe there's a job or something goes wrong. And then it's like all the, the, the house of cards just comes down um, because you've put your, your self-worth and value on something outside of yourself. And, and that's just not the right direction to be to be going really is it so i think it's really helpful also to to be yeah you know, to have that awareness it certainly made me realize actually you know just being being myself being being authentic just following what excites me being kind you know all the usual things that was enough my presence was enough um maybe not everyone's cup of tea but um you know, for some, it will be, it will be enough. It will be good. Um, and, um, there will be, yeah, some, it's yeah. not, it's not always easy. Like, obviously guys, if you're, you guys are still listening to it, to this at this point, <laughs> because we're kind of like, you know, going into the nitty gritty here. But, um, what I want to say is that just notice, notice for yourself. And if you're, you know, having pain, like, I mean, if you're suffering of some sort, then just notice, oh, you're suffering. You are not the suffering. You are presently qualifying whatever feeling, whatever you're thinking right now as suffering. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong. There's absolutely nothing wrong. We're just pointing to, we're just pointing to what's going on yeah 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 i think it's really useful to distinguish between the content of our experience like what's happening what we're meaning we're making of that 
and and who we are like those two things are, are distinct um because so often we identify with what we're experiencing and, and the way that we're dealing with it um but actually that they're, they're separate you know who we are that are being you know it's like the human being we're, we're having a human experience but there's also this being that's always there constant throughout it all and and i was just it just kind of came to me um earlier i was just doing some gardening and, and i just happened to remember an experience that i had in a flotation tank because i'd seen an advert somewhere earlier this morning um and i just thought oh i'd love to do that again when you're in a flotation tank have you have you been in one no i was just talking to a girlfriend the other day yeah, i said well, i'm gonna go do it so cool if, if you're not if you don't feel too, if you don't get claustrophobic because that could be maybe a bit challenging but you know imagine you're in a warm bath yeah and it's so interesting. It's just so fascinating. So, you know, because of the salt levels, um, you obviously are able to float. But the way that I did it, I guess it's, I guess it's standard. There was, it was dark. There was, there was no noise. It's pretty sound insulated. So you haven't got your sight because it's dark. You haven't got your sense. You're not hearing much and smell. Yeah. Okay. You might smell a little bit of the salt, but nothing much. So your, your senses are pretty numbed other than initially this sense of oh there's the water and you're being held in but even the sense of, of of touch kind of goes because suddenly when you've relaxed and there isn't a certain amount of trust in letting go um especially because you don't know if your head's suddenly getting underwater and i wear contact lenses so i was like thinking oh my goodness you know i don't want to get salt in my eyes but it didn't it just was, was fine but it took me a while just to trust and let go and then suddenly I couldn't feel the edges of my body anymore. It was just like, I was just being in the, in this space. I could hear, actually I could hear my heartbeat, but that was rhythmic and actually quite soothing. And my mind slowly got quieter and quieter. And, and you kind of lose that sense of separation. You know, you're just there. And that's the being to me, the best way that I suddenly realized I could talk about the being of the human being. It's just that, presence that we are that's there the awareness that's always there um underlying everything yeah especially when we're in our heart so i think it's a really powerful experience if if you can cope with being in like this container you know um yeah it's, it's really but it's beautiful it's a beautiful way to end the 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 the, the episode actually karina yeah i i'm going to go do one and uh <laughs> <laughs> I will let you know how that turned out. Um, but listen, I wanted to say thank you. This was fun. I enjoyed it. And um, guys, if you want to hear about Karina or connect with Karina, you can find her on InsideOutLove.com. So you can reach out to her there. She also has a Facebook, Karina Loweth, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Yeah. So to everybody, I'm going to say dream it, dare it, do it, live the life you want, and I'll see you next time. Bye.